Um, yeah, I, I learned. Huh? I learned something from you guys. Huh? Something, something quite important actually. This is very good. <laughs> All right. So. Um, okay. So then, uh, so we had this. Let's go back to our little lemma. Uh, so first of all, so we we computed the um, uh, the fundamental group of the Hilbert scheme, right? And we um, we computed its cohomology. Okay. All right. So um, so let me also give you another a little thing about the fundamental group. Uh, so we can prove that. So this is again, uh, you know, it's a fact from algebraic topology and um, let's see, where did I have that? Yeah, it's a fact from algebraic topology if you like. And it tells you that pi one of S to the R is equal to actually H one of S Z. Okay, so, um, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, no, no, I have uh, pi, pi one of S uh, symmetric power, right? That's, that's the fact from algebraic topology. And so then this, if I use the computation that I made of pi one of the Hilbert scheme, right? Uh, I showed that, uh, we showed that pi one of the Hilbert scheme is isomorphic to pi one of the symmetric power. So then knowing that pi one of the symmetric power is H one of S, this, this means that pi one of the Hilbert scheme is, can be identified with H lower one of S as well, okay. So we've got pi one of the Hilbert scheme and we've got the cohomology of the Hilbert scheme, right? So as a corollary, what do we get? If S is a K3 surface, then uh, pi one of the Hilbert scheme is trivial. We know that and H2 of the Hilbert scheme can be identified with H2 of the K3 surface plus multiples of the exceptional divisor. Okay. And so, in particular, um, what do you get? In particular, you get that. H to zero of the Hilbert scheme, or actually, let me um, let me write that first. H zero of omega two of the Hilbert scheme, right? Which is H two zero of S R is the same as H two zero can be identified with H two zero of S, which is isomorphic to H zero of omega 2s and this has dimension one. So what this tells you is that if S is a K3 surface, then your Hilbert scheme is irreducible holomorphic syntactic. Okay. And um, all right, so that's that. And then, but what happens if S is not a K3? If S is not a K3, then that's the complex torus case, right? So, complex torus of dimension two, right? Um, then we're going to take, uh, actually, let me also call it, uh, it's 11 hours. let me call it A, so that I don't confuse the K3 case and then the, um, the complex torus case, right? So then 
uh, we're going to take the Hilbert's, Hilbert scheme in one more degree. So we're going to add one more to the degree of our zero cycles. Then this guy, um, this guy here, we, we already know that it's horomoromorphic symplectic, right? Because all we needed for that was that the, the surface was holomorphic symplectic. What we don't know is whether the weather it's irreducible, right? So, so what is pi one now? Pi one of a r plus one is, as we said, can be identified with h lower one of a z. Now this is no longer zero. This can be identified with z four, right? So this not this is not zero. This is not trivial, right? And h two. Well, this we said is H2 of A uh, with, with, with rational coefficients, right? Plus multiples of the diagonal. Oh, sorry, plus of H2 of H1. Plus multiples of the, of the exceptional divisor. So again, this is not, <clears throat> so again, you see now that the, um, that the dimension of H to zero is bigger than one, right? You're gonna get some two zero forms from here. So this, this tells you that this, uh, in, the, in the complex torus case, this is not holomorphic symplectic as you would have expected. Okay, but we can actually, we can still extract and oh, sorry, it is holomorphic symplectic. It's not irreducible. So, but we can actually still extract something irreducible from it. So, how do we do that? So, we consider the addition map. And let me call that um, uh, sigma from a r plus one, and this is my uh, blow up morphism row, right? And this is, um, sorry, um, no, 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 uh, just that. So we have the addition map, let's say little s from the symmetric power to the complex torus itself, right? And then what we can do, we can compose it. So compose here. So we have the blow up map, which we call the row to the symmetric power. And then we can put the addition map here. And I'm going to call this combination here, sigma. Okay. Um, and so the, the, key, the key is that, so you see, what do we want? We want to produce something that's simply connected and irreducible holomorphic symplectic. So if you look at the computation that we made, pi one is isomorphic to pi one of A, right? This is also pi one of A. And H2 is what we want, except there's a wedge two H1 of A here, but a is a complex torus. So wedge two H1 of A is again, a copy of H2 of A. So if you look at this addition map, um, this, the, extra, the extra stuff that you have is all occurring at the bottom in A, right? The pi one is the extra pi one. You don't want it. It's, it's in A. And this wedge two of H1 is also in A. So if you wanna get rid of that stuff, the, the, the right thing to do is to get the the, to take the fiber of sigma. You see, if you take the fiber of sigma, that fiber is not gonna have any pi one because pi ones are all coming from A and it's not gonna have that wedge two of H one because again, that's coming from A from the bottom here. So that's, that's going to be our irreducible holomorphic symplectic guy. So put KR as sigma inverse of zero. So, um, okay, so this is, this is what we call the generalized Kuma. So this is definition KR is the uh, R plus 
I'm, I'm not sure whether I should say R plus first or Rs. Uh, I think I will say if R is one, it's already, yeah, let me say it's the R plus first generalized Kuma. Okay, so um, <clears throat> so now okay, so now let's see. So we have again some nice properties of this KR and of this uh, this map, which is induced by the addition map, right? Which I'm going to summarize in another diagram, right? So, but first I need to introduce the action by translation. So the complex torus A. Acts on itself. by translation um, so I'm going to tell you, you know I'm going to denote uh, T sub a from a to a the translation a by translation by a right and then uh, it also acts the TA acts on the Hilbert scheme by pullback. So you, you can take a, an Artinian subscheme and you send it to TA upper star of C. Okay. And then we have uh, we have a Cartesian diagram again. As follows. So I'm going to have AR plus one here. I'm going to map it down to A via my map S, which was induced by, uh, no, sigma, which was induced by addition, right? Then over, over here, I can write, I'm, I'm gonna write the translation action, right? Uh, which, is, which, which takes a pair, little a z, and sends it to T a upper star of z. And then here I need to put something which will make the card diagram Cartesian. So if you think about it a little bit, you will see that see, this has got to be A times A. And then to, to make this diagram Cartesian, uh, so you have, you're gonna take a pair, little a, little x. And of course you have to send it to some translator of x by A. But if you think about it a little bit, you need to, you need to take TR, R plus one times A of x in order for this diagram to commute, okay? And you, you see that you have the Cartesian diagram like this, and then you can, you can restrict this diagram to KR to the Kummer, which is the sigma inverse of zero inside AR plus one, right? So it induces another diagram, which I'm going to write, which induces the Cartesian diagram. Like this. So I'm going to put A times KR now. And this again, I cannot put KR here because once I do my translation, the fiber over zero can go anywhere, right? So I can't really do that, but I, I'm, I have the same map here, right? I can, I'm just restricting my map to the fiber over zero. Here I have again the map sigma. And here now, I'll just get A because I got rid of one copy. And here the map is, um, uh, whoops. Mm. I think I made a mistake here when I, there's something wrong. Okay, well, the, the, the A on the left, okay, let, let me not put that. The A on the left is just the image of A times KR. So, um, and this here will just be multiplication by R plus one. Okay. All right. Yeah, so basically you're, if you look, if you look at this other diagram, it takes a little bit of thought to see that when you restrict to KR over here on the, on the upper left corner, then, um, 
The image on the left is going to be just a copy of A, and this map that I've got on the bottom is going to become a multiplication by R plus one. Okay. So, um, all right. So now if we go back, let's go back to our, our other di diagram. So what you see now, this is a Cartesian diagram, right? And what does this tell you? You can see here that, um, you know, the map, the map on the left is, uh, is just basically a product, right? So uh, it's just a projection to the first factor. So, um, so this, uh, as I said, this kind of implies that this sigma is a smooth map and all the fibers are isomorphic, all of its fibers are isomorphic to the same guy, to KR, okay? And you can also prove is that um, KR is holomorphic symplectic and it's actually irreducible holomorphic symplectic. Right? Okay, so, um, and also what you get is that, um, and we have the cohomology H2 of KR Is, is isomorphic to H2 of A plus multiples of the same, of the exceptional divisor again. Um, actually, you have to take the, so the except, it's, this is the exceptional divisor of the Hilbert scheme intersected with KR, right? So um, maybe I should write it that way, that would be less confusing. So you can you can prove all of this. Uh, it's not too difficult, but you know I think it's a little bit too much detail for our lectures. Um, I will be putting more details, you know, in the in the in the notes in the lecture notes, which will be published later in the in the conference in the in the proceedings. So, are there any questions? This is a good place for me to stop a little bit. So I I will take any questions if there are any. Okay. All right, so, um, so you see now, what are the dimensions of these guys? I mean, you see that the, uh, so note that the dimension of SR is 2R, and it's also the dimension of KR, right? So we've got holomorphic symplectic manifolds of every dimension in this way. We've got two of each. And if you look at the, the comma, you know, the Becky numbers, you see that um, here B2 of KR is one more than the, bet the second Betty number of A, which is six, this guy is seven. And if you look at the, the K3 case, uh, you see that the Betty number is again, the second Betty number is again, one more than the second Betty number of the K3 surface. And uh, guys, uh, I always get confused, is that 20? Or is it 19? I think it's 20, right? So I think I get 21. Is that right? Or is it 22? It's right. Huh? Is that correct? Is it 21 or is it 22? Because I, I always I always get confused about this. But anyway, well, we can fix it later anyway. So you see now this. Uh, so since these guys have different Betty numbers, they're not deformation equivalent. They have different B2s. 
Okay. Um, now, so these are, these are all the examples of holomorph of irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifolds that people know, except for two with what people call sporadic examples. So there are two more examples, two more known examples uh, due to O'Grady. Uh, one is uh, which are which are not deformation equivalent to these. Um, uh, one of them is 10 dimensional and the other one is six dimensional. Uh, so they are, um, they're not deformation equivalent to these, but they were still obtained from K3 and uh, uh, K3 surfaces and complex tori of dimension two. So they, they were, you know, O'Grady constructed them by um, uh, doing, uh, you know, as, as moduli spaces of a certain type of sheaves on on on, K, on a K three surface and or certain type of sheave on a on a complex surface of dimension two, and then he showed that they're not deformation equivalent. Uh, there's a question in the chat. Oh, okay. Somebody's saying it's twenty two. Uh, yeah. Oh, so it's twenty three then. <laughs> um. Okay. I'll I'll put uh, I'll put twenty three. We can always change it later. All right, 23. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's another chat. Yeah, right, thanks. Okay, very good. Thank you guys. Um, okay, so these are, as I was saying, these are the, the, the only known examples. So it's a big open problem. Are there other examples? Are there other examples? Other families? Uh, or let me put it in a different way. Are there irreducible holomorphic syntax manifolds which are not deformation equivalent to one of these. Um, Ilham, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Um, so the Kuma and the uh, Hilbert scheme of points, um, are they never deformation equivalent, or is there a way? Uh, how do you show that they are they are not deformation equivalent to each other? Oh, the B twos are different, right? Yeah, they oh, can't be. Okay, that's right. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is a this is a big open problem. You know, uh, you will probably get uh, some prizes. You know, if you solve this problem, but. Uh, Okay, so the, the problem, I mean, the main thing is actually, we will get into that again, uh, probably sometime tomorrow. I'm not sure uh, today we won't get to that, but um, <clears throat> the thing is that everything basically hinges on the second cohomology on H2 for these irreducible holomorphic symplectic manifolds. Uh, they are, to a large extent, determined by their H2. So it makes sense to think that uh, they look a lot like surfaces. And you know the place to look for them is is surfaces. So you should try and do more constructions with surfaces if you want to construct more of these guys. Uh, but then maybe maybe that's not true. I mean, who knows? And that's that's kind of like a you know that's a philosophical philosophical way of thinking. But um, it's possible that there are some very some strange examples that have nothing to do with surfaces out there. But all the ones that we can actually construct have got something to do with surfaces. And that's, that's the logical way of thinking about it. Anyway, so, all right. So now, okay, so exactly. So I'm getting to this uh, H2 business, which has to do with moduli and Torelli, so, uh, and, and the period domain. So I'm going to now uh, switch, switch gears a little bit 
and I'm going. I want to talk about uh, moduli of these things. So um, again, uh, if there are no other questions at this point, okay, right. So I will. Uh, and as I said, I would have to leave exactly at 1, 11.30 today, so I'm not, I only have like 10 minutes now, so I will talk a little bit about that. So moduli of hypercalers. Um, oops. The bovine bogomolar form. the period domain and the period map. And throw. Okay. Um, so let me first just uh, talk about some generalities. So, Um, so given a differentiable manifold, X, uh, there can be many complex structures on X. And um, so we, we define, we have several, I mean, we have various ways of classifying these, uh, these different complex structures on us, on X, right? So one, one way is, is the Teichmuller space. Which is defined as follows. So I'm going to denote it as Teich of X which is by definition, the set of all complex structures on X modulo an equivalence relation, which I will denote by tilde zero. And what is this tilde zero? Where two complex structures I and J are equivalent, which we write as i tilde zero j, if there exists a diffeomorphism phi from x to x, such that phi upper star of i is j, and phi is isotopic if or if you like uh, homeotopic to the or homotopic to the identity. Okay. Um, all right, so this is the definition of the Teichmuller space. And then the second space that actually it's the second space that we would be really interested in, and that's the moduli of complex structures. So the moduli space of complex structures. on X is again, by definition, uh, I will call this one um, comp uh, of X. And this guy is going to be the set of all complex structures again. Modulo though a different equivalence relation, which I will just denote as tilde where Two complex structures I and J are equivalent if again there exists a diffeomorphism phi from X to X such that phi upper star of I is J. So what I've removed here is the condition that phi should be 
uh, homotopic or isotopic to the identity, right? I've removed that condition. So, um, so then th these, two, these two moduli spaces are, are of course related to each other, right? So this is how they're related to, to each other. So if we denote diff of X, uh, the group of diffeomorphisms of X, and uh, diff zero, it's, um, it's connected component of the identity. Uh, then uh, I'm going to, I can call G the quotient Uh, this is the group of components of the effects. And it's a discrete group, right? Because, um, because I, I killed the connected component of the identity. And then, you know, then by basically by definition, uh, you have that, um, you can get comp of X as the quotient of uh, Teich of X by the action of G. So there's an action of, there's, gonna, there's an action of G on Teich of X and then the, the quotient by that action will give you comp. So as, as I said, a, a priori, what we're interested in is complex structures on X and um, but the problem is that comp is actually not a very nice space, right? So a priori, we're interested in comp. We are interested um, but uh, it does not have so many nice properties. You know, for instance, it can be not non hausdorff and it can have all kinds of awful uh, things. So, um, so Taish is not as a lot nicer. Right? And so what we do in practice, uh, we, we will just work with small open sets of Taish. All right, and uh, which you know what do what do these what do these what do these do? They describe small deformations of complex structures. Okay. All right, so now, uh, so now again, like I, like I said, we want to study these spaces. So we're going to, and studying them is, is equivalent to studying deformations of complex structures. So that's the next thing we want to do. So let's talk about deformations a little bit. Um, let's start with a definition. Um, so a family of complex manifolds is a smooth proper morphism of complex spaces. like this. 
And then, uh, okay, and then, sorry, I'm gonna to have to st stop here and uh, we will continue tomorrow, if that's okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Bye.